What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Banjo Tooie. In the last episode, we completed Jiggy Wiggy's challenge, which allowed us to enter the first level here, Mayhem Temple. And this episode is the warp pad. Find another one in this world, and you'll be able to warp between them. So, as I said before, the levels in this game are much more expansive than they were in Banjo Kazooie, hence the need for warp pads. There are actually several sections two levels like this and we're gonna just avoid this guy because he is very annoying and will shoot darts at us so I'm gonna avoid him and head up and grab these notes they come in note nests in this game as opposed to singular notes so you're gonna be grabbing everything in multi uh, in I guess sets of five so let's grab all those there's a hundred notes in every single level and then if we can continue to head up this way, I'm going to ignore that for now. If we continue to head up this way, we can grab a bunch more. No, I, get, I don't want to get my sorry hide over there. I want to get all the notes first, sir. Golly, you jerk. All right, let's keep heading up this way and grab all of these. There's still a few more to be had. And then here we also get the signature enemies of the level. Goodbye, kitty. Oh, hey, actually, I do want to show that. So right here, this is a, this is a skill stop honeycomb. Press X to stop your energy bar as close to the top as possible. So more often than not, if you don't have full health, these can actually be pretty detrimental. But if you press it at the right time, fill your health bar, pretty good. Later on in the game, though, those will move a lot faster. So do be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, I know I found another warp pad. I got it, dude. I got it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he, he, he does get a little annoying at the beginning, but he's not so bad later on. Okay, so we've collected 80 notes. Now, the last one I actually do believe we can get if we climb up here to the top. Um, actually, no, I am wrong. It's not at the top. It's over here. I am incorrect about that. Okay, little fuzzy, little fuzzy. Um, I think it's, is it actually, is it down? Maybe it isn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I know exactly where it is now that I, now I think about it. Okay, sorry. Like I said, I'm a little rusty. A little frickin' rusty. Oh my goodness. Okay, no, it's actually right back there. Wah! No! Oh my goodness, I can't believe I fell there. Hold on. Let's try that again. Once more with feeling. Eh. Let's go this way instead. There we go. And I believe I want a talent trot up that. Eh. Oh, no. We actually got the jiggy here. Okay, well, I'll take that. I thought... There you are. I see it now. Okay, let's, there it is. It's on the, I knew it was on the back side of this temple somewhere. I just couldn't remember exactly. That right there is a treble clef note that is worth 20 immediately. I believe, I don't even think there's even one in every single level, but they do get your note count up really quickly. So that should be all of the notes for this entire level. Now we can head over here and talk to this mysterious mole that keeps chattering on. So, let's say hi. Drill Sergeant Jam Jar is reporting for duty, sir. Banjo, get a load of this bozo. He looks like bottles in uniform. Of course I look like bottles, you punk. He's my brother. How's the geek keeping anyway? Not too good. Uh, recently deceased at the hands of Grunty the Witch. Sorry to hear that, Fleaball. Did he go out fighting? Playing cards, actually. Typical. So you'll be wanting to learn some of my special moves to get even with the witch, huh? Not really. Bottles taught us loads in the last game. Pa! He only knew novice moves. You'll get nowhere without my advanced techniques. Sounds good to us, Jam Jars. Why not teach us a few now? Not that easy, punk. You gotta prove your uh, sorry selves first by collecting me a few. Okay, well, we have the notes. So, just shut up for a second. Okay, there we go. So, you got enough notes for my first lesson. Listen and learn, you punks. So, we get egg aim. What you need is an aiming sight. Hit the target, then you might. First person view by pressing Y, hit L, or R. Uh, left trigger, right trigger, and something, something. I don't freaking know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Dismissed. Ah! <laughs> Ah, on the first one, there's like a very small chance that that'll happen when he dives back in, but we got that on the first try. Okay, so if you head back into your view, you'll actually get yourself a little reticle here that you can pull around, and gosh, is it unwieldy. That did not age well at all, but you can actually shoot it at the head of those things, not to kill them, but to certainly disable them for the time being if they're giving you a lot of trouble. But I'm going to head up this way. And actually, we had another little stop over here that um, where Jam Jars was, and we can get ourselves another ability in the process. I think there's three in this level. So what do we got here? Brigo Blaster. Here's a move that's a load of fun. Now use Kazooie as a handheld gun. Left trigger, right trigger, fires eggs both high and low. Target Zan's temple, and you can go. 
We will be going to that location much later, but for the time being, we're just going to ignore that. That is an ability that will come in hand, uh, well, li literally in hand, uh, in handy, excuse me, as soon as we enter this place right here. But I am not interested in doing so, so we're going to ignore that for the time being. Where did you come from, sir? Okay, so... Start talking about the most important things that you need to get done in this level. First things first, we got Mumbo right here, and I actually believe... I go back here. Is there anything back here? No, there's not. Okay, well, we're just going to head straight on inside then. And, oh, look, you're going to want to grab this little creature right off the bat as soon as you head on inside. It's called a Globo, and we're actually going to need to use this to then purchase Mumbo's services. <coughs> What's up, dude? Ah, uh, I didn't actually mean to skip that. Okay, we got a Globo. Must give magical creature to Mumbo if want help. Want Mumbo's help? Absolutely. All right, dude. Here you go. And so, in this game, as opposed to having Mumbo turn you into things, he will instead allow you to control him. So, he has one attack, which, by the way, I should also mention he has less health, but he has one attack, and this is sort of a stun ability. Now, the really nice thing about it is that if enemies start to chase you and you pull out the wand and start zapping them, if they're not, if you're not already zapping them, they will actually and actively run away from it. So, it's a good way of keeping things at bay, but of course, with Mumbo, you are not as mobile as you are with Banjo and Kazooie, so you do need to be a little bit more wary of guys like this. Mumbo can also not very not swim very well, and obviously he doesn't have any of Banjo and Kazooie's abilities. So we're going to want to head down here because what you need Mumbo for in this game is this. A Mumbo pad. Hope this works. And he does a little chant, and we will summon what is known as the Golden Goliath. Now you're actually going to be using this guy to get yourself quite a few jiggies. Because you can actually control him a bit. Look at that! Isn't that nifty? Alrighty. So there's a couple wa things that you can do with this guy. Yeah, Mumbo Magic make Golden Goliath rise. Magic only lasts a short time to control me again. Return statue to its base and press B. Okay, so we got 75 seconds to do this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head over this way. This guy is completely invincible and he has a kicking attack, which allows us to do that, which is hilarious. Now, if you head over here, you can actually kick this open, which will allow Banjo and Kazooie to enter that way in due time. But now we're going to head back on down because we actually don't need this guy for anything else. In fact, I'm going to reset the timer just because I don't think I'll make it all the way if I don't. So we're going to do this again. Yeah, do your, do your thing. Again, I, I do wish that this didn't have to play every time. Granted, it is a shortened cutscene every single time you reactivate the Golden Goliath, but now with our full timer, we can actually head over this way. Now, there is technically another ability you're supposed to unlock to get rid of this rock, but if you use the Golden Goliath, you could just straight kick it and have access to that flight pad immediately instead of needing to get the ability that you don't get for another level. Let's open up this one, and this one we can actually enter on through because it's big enough, and from here, we're going to want to head over this way. And we're actually going to want to walk all the way across this swamp. This is the only way that you can get this Jiggy. This poor cat is in a very bad spot. And we're going to grab that. Just like so. Now there's one more thing left for us to do while we have the Golden Goliath available to us. And that is to head over this way and kick one last door open. I'm also going to kick this guy just because it's hilarious. I love how the rocks blast everywhere. So what you want to do is head up to this and kick that open. And there you go. That is everything you need the Golden Goliath for. I think I thought there was a cancel button. But I could be wrong. Is there not a cancel button? Okay, never mind then. So we'll have to just kind of wait for the timer to run out. He can jump, but it's very pathetic and hilarious. Um... Oh, I guess we can get this warp pad activated, can't we? Let's see. Yep, okay, awesome. So we at least did that, and then, ooh, what is that thing? Well, I'm sure we'll find out in due time, but we are absolutely done with Mumbo's services for the time being. So, now we can take him back to his skull and recontrol Banjo and Kazooie and start going after everything else left in this level. There is still so much to be done, and we're going to be trying to tackle it as efficiently as possible. This first level, I have it pretty much down. I mean, I've beaten this so many times that even now, so many years later, after having not played this game in a long time, I still have most of it memorized. It's going to be the later levels that are going to give me more trouble, especially like the last two or three. 
Those ones are going to definitely give me the most trouble. But let's head all the way back up. And all you got to do is just hop in the chair. And there you go. All right. So let's head back down. Get the heck on out of here. Always use Talon Trot. It is way faster, if a little bit more annoying because of Kazooie. Um, if that's your thing. Now, if we head over this way, we can actually get ourselves a Jinjo over here. You can see him screaming for help on the bridge. So let's grab that. There we go. Yippee! You saved me! I'm off for home now! And you get to actually see that there is... A certain number of Jinjos allocated to each home. Also, that was a treble clef note up there that I just barely noticed. I didn't actually see that before. So it's going to show us the number of yellow Jinjos that we need. Thanks for rescuing me. I live in this house with the rest of my... I don't actually know if it's the Jinjos are randomized in terms of colors. But rescue us all and we'll give you the, f uh, the family heirloom, which is always a jiggy, of course. So now let's continue to head over this way. And actually, you're going to need the egg aim for this particular part. So let's talk to this uh, character right here. Look at the state of poor Bovina's field. This plague of filthy flies is scoffing my crops. Oh dear, how can we help with that? Get rid of these pesky flies, of course. Say your prayers, flies. All right, so all we got to do is head on into this view, and we got to just start shooting eggs at them. Like so, which is easier said than done because, gosh, this thing is super unwieldy. All right, there is one more. Where art thou fly? There you are. Can I hit him? Eh, right there. Perfect. Let it just beautifully. Amazing! I corn hardly believe it. You Wheatley sorted those flies out. Enough of the crop jokes, lady. I believe you owe us a jiggy. And then she gives it to us. <laughs> Pretty awesome. All right, so let's grab ourselves that. I l love how the Jiggy animation is even faster in this game than it is in Banjo-Kazooie. You just walk through it, and you have it, and it's great. Okay. Oh, dang it. I actually can't get that. I was hoping I could just jump right up there. So don't worry. We'll be able to get that very, very soon, as a matter of fact. I'm going to actually head on down this way. And rather than going through the, sh the short door, I'm going to actually go all the way over to the door down here so we can go unlock the very last jam jars ability in this level which pertains to that honeycomb that i was unable to get that empty honeycomb which those obviously play a part in this game very similar to the part that they played in banjo kazooie their functionality is just slightly different in this game so let's head over here kill that guy and what's up jam jars Grip grab, listen up to what you're told. On the edges you can now hold. Move along with the greatest of ease. Button X to attack what you please. Yeah, this is a, an ability that in hindsight I cannot believe was not in the first game. But you can hop up and grab a ledge. And you can also use Kazooie to attack things. If you should need to in certain situations. So there's our first of eight purple Jinjos. Now we're going to head over this way. And really quickly, I'm actually going to go over this direction instead before we head on over to the uh, tent or I think is it a wi it's a wigwam, I think is what it's called. Actually, I think if I'm oops, that was a, my mistake. I should have timed that better. I think I can just walk up this, can't I? Yes, indeed. All right. So this part is pretty fun. We're going to want to climb up here and we have ourselves a little bit of a puzzle here. So we got this snake. And actually, I'm just going to show what happens if you do that. No, don't eat it! Thought you'd steal Slumber's gold while he slept, did you? Well, yes, to be honest. <laughs> but I heard you coming, clumsy bear. Oh, well, okay. Well, if I hop down here, will you spit it out? Splendid! They seem to have gone. Must get some more sleep. Well, how about you sleep forever? Also, your eyes are still open, but uh, how about you sleep forever when I do this? So if you head here and you go into... No, I didn't mean to walk. I meant to tiptoe. Gosh dang it. Spit it out. Okay, there we go. Let's try that again. And if we can't... Ah, bah, 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 bah. Oh, this is actually really hard to do with an Xbox controller. All you gotta do is go into tiptoe mode and just main... No! Frickin'... Seriously? My, I cannot believe I'm actually struggling at this so bad. This is, like, really hard to do with an Xbox controller. Okay. There. No, 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 no. Very slowly. There we go. Just hold that. Perfect. We got this. Why is this so difficult on the Xbox controller? I remember having no problems with this on the N64 controller. 
Oh, that tilt. Give me the jiggy. What the frick? Is this for real right now? Okay. Okay. Do I really? I seriously, like, <laughs> seriously. Why is this controller so finicky, man? Okay, I guess we just got to line ourselves up perfectly. Just changing directions is all it took. Man. Well, it's a good thing we don't need to do this mechanic too much in this game. But there we go. And as soon as you grab that, you can run around freely and you don't have to worry about a thing and he never wakes up. All right. So, what more? I, I need to end this episode, actually. You know what? Let's do this for the last thing in this episode. We're going to grab this ledge here and head on over. You're going to have these guys that are going to try to attack you here. So, let's use Kazooie to do that. So, just make sure you pause right before you get to them. Because they will knock you off the ledge if they hit you. They also respawn pretty quickly, so be aware of that. But we're going to drop down and grab ourselves a Cheeto page. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much. In the next episode, we're going to be doing, getting into the real nitty-gritty of Mayhem Temple with some interesting sports action. I, I'll just say that much. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode very much, and I will see you all then.